How's it going everybody? Take a look what we got here. A little change of pace. We got the Volvo Penta SX on the bench. As you can see, the reason we're doing this video today is we got a lot of excess oil and grease built up on this pinion carrier. Tons of it. So we're going to go over some ins and outs of this pinion carrier. Some things to look out for. Mainly, what we're going to be concerned with is fixing the seal. There's some uh, disclaimers, if you would, before we kick this off. We'll go over that here in just a second. And this is the whole reason why we're even looking at the seal in the first place. Normally, in some of the older Volvo um, or even the OMC Cobras, you would see water in here. This one actually has gear oil. Crazy, right? Obviously, the bellows are intact, so that's a good sign. Let's talk about how we're going to fix this. On the older OMCs, when you had an oil seal leak in here, you actually pretty much had to send it off to get it repaired because there was no easy way. Even though you took these bolts off, there's no easy way to get to the oil uh, seal that's in the housing here for the pinion. And what that meant is more money, right? But with these Volvo Penta SXs, you can actually remove the seal without having to send it off per se. There are some some little disclaimers I'll go over as we're getting into it, but what you're gonna want to kick this off are you need to get a let's see if I can you can tell I still got the grease on my finger from when I grabbed when I was putting my finger in those bellows and I can't even grab onto the, the little wrench here. It's pretty sad. Alright. So you can see here, these things are on almost with what I would consider like inch pounds. When you're going through and snugging these back up, here, here check this one out, I haven't even uh, loosened it up yet. I just use my thumb and it comes off. I would say when you're going to go ahead and install these again, just barely snug them up. I wouldn't even do a grunt if you know what I mean, like where you go, yeah, like that, like don't even do that. You definitely don't need any blue Loctite or anything along those lines. These things are on, I mean like barely on. I, I don't even know how they completely stay, but they are. And so far, let's take a look here. I don't see any, I bet a few of you are watching this saying, hey, why are you using a wrench here? Why don't you get a socket on it? I know. Let's loosen it up a little bit more. There we go. Yeah, so no, there's no Loctite on these. Pretty easy. Yeah, easy enough. Let's see if there's any kind of weird etching on this. Nope. It's stainless though. That's good. Alright, so we'll set that one down. Let's go ahead and remove um, this one. I'll go ahead and get my ratchet attached to it and start spinning it off. It's removed so far. We will go ahead and proceed now with the... Uh, I believe there's two, two more. There's one here. And we'll go ahead and remove the bottom two now. Okay. And there's the last one. Let's give it... You want to get your rubber mallet out. a few little taps. Keep in mind, this is aluminum and you don't want to be hitting it with a steel hammer. Alright, so there is a gear in here that they are meshed together, so you definitely want to make sure Gear isn't an issue here too, so we'll spin. spin that around a little bit. Alright, let's give it a few more whacks. Okay. Now we got on the table. Just make sure you got something to catch your oil with. I forgot to mention that at the beginning if you haven't already drained out your upper and lower unit. 
fun times. Anyway, as you can see here, we've got the bearing uh, carrier assembly on our little bench here. This um, inner seal looks like it's definitely busted. This green seal seems like it's still intact. We'll probably have to buy new, new seals. That may all be one. Kind of hard to say. Definitely broken though. So, like I said, I indexed them just in case they do go in a certain way. They probably don't, but it is what it is. All right, so you can see what we have here. It's going to be a T50. It may it may vary on yours, but I got a T50 on this one. All right. So one of the things that I was going to show you here is how we are going to capture the baseline measurements as it pertains to the distance between the inner race and the gear, which is kind of important. You gotta definitely have that measurement. And I also have a feeler gauge as well, which is, as you can see, there's a little crack right in there. It's gonna be kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can capture it pretty good with the camera. Let's see if I can get in there. Yeah, right there. So I played around with the feeler gauges. Just in case you're wondering on the measurements, 0 0.028 of an inch or 0 0.711 millimeters. And that's between the actual pinion gear. All right, right there. Good. All right, the other thing and the other thing you want to look at if you don't have the appropriate feeler gauges is you also want to maybe use a micrometer. So what I did here is I actually took my micrometer and there is no play. Kind of like a poor man's way of doing it as well. But you're going between the race and the inner part of the gear, the inner part of the pinion gear. So why is all this important? Why not just torque it? The reason why you can't torque it is inside of here is a crush sleeve and the crush sleeve is more about the distance versus a torque so that's why that's where the disclaimer came if you just go in and uh, yank this off and put it all back together the distance between this gear and the gears inside of the upper unit may be off so what you want to do is you want to be very careful about when you pull this assembly apart that you don't change the distance. Let's see if I can get that focus to come back. You don't want to change that distance in there. Otherwise, you're going to have some major issues. So what we're going to do to kind of help us determine what the torque is as it sits now without changing the shape of the, the uh, crush sleeve is I've got this torque wrench but it's not one that is a click type it's one that's going to help us determine what the torque is currently and this is the best way to do it unless you're going to want to completely reshim your pinion gear so if you're not trying to reshim your pinion gear and you and you just want to do this the quick and easy way this is the best way to do it as you want to try to get as close to the original torque as possible so you're not crushing the sleeve anymore and you're also not leaving it loose to the point where this gear can slide out. So let's go ahead and take the torque wrench and let's see what torque this thing was set up at initially as it pertains to the crush sleeve. And just in case you're curious, I got 0.1535 of an inch. I'm not sure if I showed that. It, it kind of varies, 0.154 and 1535 just just for your own edification on on mine now i'm sure you're curious about how i got mine loosened up and like i said nothing fancy we're just using regular old tools here so i stuck a 9 16th wrench i put a roll of paper towels because you know once the bolt loosens up real quick your hand kind of want to kind of wants to go so this is kind of like my cushion and I did get it off and I was watching the gauge. It did come off at 20 foot pounds of torque. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work up when we go to put this back on. We're gonna re-torque it 
probably just under 20 because that was the breaking point. So maybe we'll go to 15 and I'll throw in some blue Loctite on it just to hold it in place. All right. Turn this sucker a little bit here. Oh yeah, you can see beneath the spacer here. It actually did have a little bit of Loctite on it. I've seen the factory, they use like a white style Loctite, so good to know. All right, I'll go ahead. Oh yeah, and it's got that familiar smell too. Cool, okay. Let's go ahead and set this to the side. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do next is we gotta get this gear off. So what we're gonna do is you can take, you don't wanna scar up anything in here, so as you're changing the, the depth of this, what you want to do is make sure that you don't score up anything. So try to get something where it fits in, maybe a socket. And what you're going to try to do is punch the spline out so it fits perfectly. Yeah, because if you get something that's too big and you hit these little parts of the gear, see if I can get my camera in here, show you. There's little splines in here. Definitely don't want to hit those if you can. So try to get something to fit directly in there and we're gonna essentially punch this uh, pinion out. Okay, so what I ended up using is I've got a 10 millimeter uh, deep socket. Just gave a few whacks with the hammer um, from this side. Pinion gear assembly is done. Take a look at this. Pretty bad, right? What do you think? I'd say that seal is definitely not working. There's a lot of grease around this area, so you can tell there's been maybe an overabundance of greasing when they did their U-joints. But yeah, it's no good. So anyway, you can see right there, we need to get our, this uh, spring out. So let's go ahead and get, grab our tool. All right, here. Let's see if I can get two hands on it. This gear oil is pretty darn greasy. Oh. Let's get another grab here. Spin it around as well so all my viewers can see this. Give it a good squeeze. What do you think? Third time's the charm? That's what I'm going with on this. Nope. Okay. Let's give it another try. Okay. Tell you what. It definitely took a little work to get that out. That's not easy. So you can see the seal in here. Looks like it's going to be pretty fun to get out. And depending on your model, you can actually use OMC parts if it's between, I believe, before 1998. Just hit me up and I'll look it up for you if you're if you uh, curious. But this is actually a uh, OMC part. But it's funny because it's still branded as Volvo, which they kind of did. They used, they had a partnership back then, so BRP, Evan Rude. Johnson, Volvo, kind of super similar. Anyway, part number 3852272. That's going to be your part, just in case you're curious. So if you do get it, sometimes through Volvo it's cheaper, sometimes through OMC it's cheaper. Kind of depends, but this way you've got an idea what, what part number to get. Alright, so that's going to do it for this episode. As we get further into this upper unit, uh, rebuild if you would. We'll get into some more of the details of what parts we're going to use and all that fun stuff. So stay tuned. Like the video if you thought it was helpful. Leave some comments. Subscribe. And we will catch you on the next episode. Have a good one.